We are in week three of the Coffee Cup Prompt Envelope. For the entire month, I will be producing one video each week with envelopes. This was week one, the interdepartmental envelope. Week two, two regular size envelopes. And week three, we are going to produce this floating pocket today. Give me a minute to introduce my channel and we'll get started. First thing I wanted to do was I chose a couple of envelopes. This envelope was actually given to me by Sharon over at Texture Junkies, the Christmas envelope in a Happy Mail packet she gave to me. I've hung on to it, and we're going to use it today. The other is just a regular legal size envelope. I'm going to start by spraying it down with some Distress Oxide spray. I've used vintage photo and peeled paint. I have a love-hate relationship with these sprays because sometimes they spray and sometimes they don't. So we have that now covered. I will cut it in half. And I've pulled out my frisker to make sure that I get a good, clean cut. So I now have that cut into two pieces. I'm folding of course, I'm going to go ahead and glue it back together. When I was spraying it, it got it wet and released that glue. So we'll glue that flap down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then fold that in half. I want to ink around the outside edges of both. And I'm utilizing Rusty Hinge to do that. I will put a little thumb notch in the top. And now I'm checking to see how that's going to look. So let's get that second piece prepared by gluing that flap shut. And we'll ink around the outside edges of this and put that little notch in the top of this one as well. Again, with the rusty hinge, I'm going around all of the outside edges. So there you have the pocket construction. And I am choosing to glue this solid on the back. You could actually just glue it um, up the two edges and have two pockets. But I'm not sure if I'm going to want to glue this in or clip it in to a journal. So I'm going to go ahead and just make that one pocket on the back. And I went to decorate with these leaves. Once again, I received these leaves from a Happy Mail from Texture Junkies, Sharon over at Texture Junkies. They're a very bright green, so I'm choosing to dilute them just a bit with some Distress Oxide Spray. I'm utilizing peeled paint and vintage photo on these leaves just to tone them down a bit. So there is the original green and I've just toned them, toned them down. And I will place them right here on the corner of that pocket. I am pulling out some burlap and just pulling the threads out of that burlap wired ribbon or wired whatever they call that. But now I have the old book page, couple of leaves, my burlap pieces, And now for something to kind of create a little bit of a focal. So I'm looking at this stamp. It seems a little too bright for what I am doing. So I'm sorting through. I found this little bug 
and that might be an option. But I also found this um, little card that says specimen on it, and I think that's what I'm going to choose. Do I want to add the dragonfly? I don't think so. I think we'll go with just the little specimen designation card. So let's glue that down. <clears throat> now, here's, here's where I forgot what I was doing and used my glue and water mixture. And of course, the distress oxide is going to run a little bit when you hit it with the moisture. So I hadn't added a fixative or anything on top of that. So I should have just glued the back of the paper and put that down. But I can work with this. I'll cover it up. I'll make it part of what my intentions were. So now I just am twist, turning the leaves in a little bit different direction to cover that. So nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained, I guess. So let's glue the back of the leaves and <clears throat> get those down. And I think I'll put a third leaf there, but I'm going to need to tone him down a bit. So we'll just hit him with some Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. A little glue on the back. And down he goes. Now some glue to hold that burlap in place. And then we'll anchor that with this little specimen card. Let me ink around the outside edge of it before I put it down. We'll add some glitter glue to make sure it is there quite securely. And I think that works. So now I have my little pocket decorated. take some liquid pearls and put little dots on each corner so they look like little hobnails. And that finishes up this floating pocket. So this pocket can be put inside your journal with a paper clip, fill it with ephemera like I'm showing here, and you have a pretty decent little envelope pocket. So now let's get started with this envelope that I received from Sharon over at Texture Junkies, this Christmas envelope. And I've hung on to this for, oh gosh, probably a year or more. <clears throat> and I thought that would make a great Christmas themed or holiday themed pocket. So let's cut that in half and go through the same process that we did with the other card or the other envelope, which is folding one of the halves in half and creating that second pocket to put around. Now I'm just deciding I don't really want, as you can see, the way that it opened or what initially happened is my little decoration on the envelope is at the bottom of the envelope. So I am glued that shut on one end and now I'm just going to take a sliver off the top so we now have the opening at the decorated end or at the printed end. It's not really decorated, it's just printed. So I'm just making sure that's shut. Now we have the opening. Let's put a little notch in. Ink around the outside edges with vintage photo. 
And now let's glue it together, doing the same as I did on the first one, gluing the entire back down up the sides to create that pocket on the front. And now we have our second envelope ready to decorate. Once again, we'll go around that bottom edge to make sure everything is in place. I think I'll put a piece of washi, uh, holiday washi, right across the bottom. And I'm going all the way around so that it is front and back. And I was going to wrap it, but I went ahead and stuck it together. So we'll just trim it off tight at the edge. And now it's time to decide how to decorate. I have this piece of gold ribbon, which I think will work. But I also have in the back of my head, there is a Victorian scrap packet that I have been hanging on to for years. So a little story about this scrap packet. I bought it back right after my first daughter was born in 1988 and did some type of decoupage thing with it that holiday. I have moved it. We restored a 100-year-old house. I bought it when we lived there. We built a log home in Indiana. It moved there with me. We moved to our home in Florida full-time. It moved there with me, and now I'm in North Georgia, and it has come with me here and was sitting on my bookshelf in my living room. So now I am going to pull it out and utilize it. So it is a weary traveler that needs to be put to purpose. So I shall use a couple of pieces out of this Victorian scrap packet and I'm placing this Victorian Santa on some holiday scrapping paper and I'm adhering that to a cardstock because I'm creating a tag with this and I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of embellishments to put down in this pocket with you because I was so excited I still had that Victorian scrap packet. And my husband thinks that I'm borderline hoarder. So with junk, with paper, he, he tells me, you know, every week I see a bag full of stuff that you're going to carry from what would normally be the trash over to your shop. So that's how we roll, right? So let's put some coffee stain paper on the back. And his big joke is, don't throw that toilet paper roll away. Mom's going to make an aircraft carrier out of it. So that's, that's what I get. Let's put some ribbon there. I thought this light green bias tape would make a nice little addition to that. Let's just tie that off at the top and trim it up. And now I have a nice little card with that Victorian scrap that has traveled with me for the past, oh my goodness, uh, 35 years, 34, 35 years, and now being put to good use in this holiday pocket. So now I decided it needed one more thing. And I had just purchased some dyes from the Tim Holtz dye packet for my hotshot. And I thought this would be a great time to use one of the birds. But I want those birds to be reflective of the holidays. So I had these playing cards that I had picked up at when I had taken my grandchildren to Chick-fil-A. They were giving away these Mickey Mouse cards. They received plenty of packets because we went several times. So I brought a packet home. I covered the card with the washi tape. Here is my little bird die. He has a die for his full body. Then he has a second die that puts some definition on the body. And the third die is his little wing. So we're going to create a washi tape covered 
playing card for each component of this bird. And then we'll shoot over to the hot shot and cut him out. So I'm just covering the cards now with the washi. And this holiday washi tape was one of the first things I bought when I got into mixed media and never really used it. So I'm using up some things that I've not used over the years. So now we have one complete. I'm just going to trim that off so that doesn't stick to anything while I'm working with it. And we'll use this red for this little guy's body. And then I think I need something lighter. We'll use the red for his wing as well. And then I think I need something lighter for the definition or something that is a real contrast in color. So let's get this one out that has that uh, cream colored background and we'll cover a card with this washi for his little body. I should have saved this little bird for, for when I pull washi tape out of my prompts. <laughs> He is now back from the hot shot, so let's assemble him and put him together. And while I am doing that, it gives me an opportunity to invite you over to my Facebook group where you can join a group of creatives that are participating in these coffee cup prompts by posting their pictures of what they do based on what that pull is at the beginning of the month as they finish. So envelopes is what the prompt is. Do whatever you want to do. You do not have to follow along and do exactly what I do. Be you. Post your videos. We love to support other channels. We love to see other channels. So don't be shy. Come on over and um, join us. One other thing that I wanted to tell you is on my website, you also have my Amazon shop, which I try to make sure that everything I use in videos is there to purchase if you choose to do so. If you purchase through my Amazon shop, of course, I make a small commission, very small, but it does not increase your price. So I'll be quiet and let you watch the photos. You look at me like I'm crazy When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments Doesn't mean I don't need you I, 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 I fell in love with your color Once again, thank you for watching Thank you for supporting my channel The playlist of all of the prompts is shown here on the end screen if you want to catch up or you don't post anything you want over in the Facebook group. You do not have to be on envelopes. If you have done an index card, feel free to post it now. We're not time sensitive. We're very accepting and loving people over in that group. So I shall say bye for now and thank you once again.